Mike Lang, Mike Young, and I had an opportunity to shoot at the third annual Florida Fun Shoot, which was held Friday at the Ancient Oak Gun Club. The event benefits wounded warriors by raising money for great local charities, including Operation Patriot Support, Operation Second Chance, Black Dagger Military Hunt Club, and Paws for Patriots, which is part of Southeastern Guide Dogs. The event's also a great opportunity to talk to vets, to meet them, to thank them for their sacrifice, and for vets to shoot with people that know them, people that understand what they're going through. Also at the event was a group of Gold Star moms and a few Gold Star dads. These are parents uh, who have lost their children in combat. At their presentation, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. The event also was a chance for us to shoot with Command Sergeant Major Gary Luttrell. Sergeant Major Luttrell received the Medal of Honor three years after he had engaged in some really intense combat in the Kantun province of South Vietnam. He was the guest of honor at the event and had a lot of fun. Sergeant Major travels about 270 days a year meeting troops, talking to troops, and asking them about what, they're, what they need, what they're going through, and he always gets a great reception. He is living right now in the St. Petersburg area and is a great, great individual to have nearby. Uh, all of us who shot with him thoroughly enjoyed the, the hours that we got to spend with him. After we were done shooting, we had the opportunity to put him on camera and ask him a few questions, and his responses should be mandatory viewing for everybody. I was advisor with the Vietnamese Rangers in 1969 and 70 sure. and uh, we uh, we got a mission to uh, to move over and assist a special forces base camp that had been overrun and we got up on top of the hill to spend the night uh, before we got to the, to the base camp and we got surrounded by the 66th NVA regiment the 29th NVA regiment and the K-6 Sapper Battalion, which is approximately 5,000 North Vietnamese. NVA. These aren't VC, right? No, these were, this This was the hardest of the hardest of the NVA. The 66th Regiment and the 29th Regiment were were pretty hardened uh, uh, NVA soldiers. And they surrounded the hill we was on. And it took us four days and four nights to basically eliminate them. We was credited for uh, rendering them not combat ready, but at the end of that four days, I went up with 473 Vietnamese Rangers and four Americans, and myself and 41 walking wounded Vietnamese come off the hill. So, you know, we were credited for winning, but uh, I don't call that a win. Yes, and then uh, I left uh, left Vietnam, and I, I considered myself uh, I consider myself very fortunate. I uh, when I left Vietnam, I I tell a lot of people I I flip my Vietnam switch off and my go home switch on. I've never looked back. I don't. I don't have issues um, with Vietnam. It's just that was a chapter of my life. That's that's history. Yes, sir. And we move on with life. Um, and then three and a half years later, after I got back, I was called to the White House to uh, uh, to receive the Medal of Honor. And that uh, that was a life changing event. How so? When, well, I stayed on active duty, and being a Medal of Honor recipient and being on active duty, you have to be perfect 24 hours a day. And, you know, as I, my, I would hear my young, uh, my young troops when I was a first sergeant, you know, saying, well, my first sergeant said this, and if my first sergeant said that, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be gospel. And so, you know, with that pressure on you that now you're not only a, a senior NCO, but you're also a Medal of Honor recipient. You're expected to set the example 100%. And it's, it's, it's difficult to stay, uh, stay perfect 24 hours a day. Um, that, was the, that was the disadvantage, I'd say, of the medal, but the advantage is that I get to do things like today. Yeah. You know, I travel all over the world. Uh, I've made six trips to Iraq, uh, five trips to Afghanistan to visit the, the service members. Uh, What's their reaction when they meet you? Uh, most of the time, it's initially it's shock, and then once I put them at ease, uh, it's just we just have a good time. You know, we we talk about uh, the differences between my war and their war, and how jealous I am of the weapon systems that they have now, and <laughs> right. and, uh, and so we just uh, we just we just have a good time. But uh, it's 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 good now after I've uh, retired completely to be a Medal of Honor recipient because I get to travel all over the world 
and uh, visit our active duty troops and do many, many events like today to raise money to support our veterans organizations. What do our veterans need? We, well, we have two classifications of veterans. Uh, we have those that are still able to work. And for those that are still able to work, they need a job without a, a, a stigma attached to it. And, and, and let, me, let me elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, I was a fundraiser in California and I was sitting beside a, uh, a, uh, a detective for the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. And she said, you know, I would like to hire veterans in the Sheriff's Department, but I'm afraid to because all of these veterans are coming back with PTSD. And I'm afraid if we get out on a, in a, in a tight situation that they might start having flashbacks. And, and so our veterans need to have this stigma of we're not crazy veterans just because we went in combat. We can still come back and, 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 and function. They need good jobs. And you know, you, you think about hiring a vet. What are you hiring? You're hiring someone that is very loyal. You're hiring someone that is very prompt. They won't take a day off because of Super Bowl headaches. Okay, uh, you, you have a loyal, high-trained, high-quality of employee. So some of our veterans need jobs and good-paying jobs. The other classification are those that cannot physically and emotionally work. What they need is for Veterans, Veterans Administration to step up to the plate and provide better care. The Veterans Administration does a good job across the board, but there are some areas like the waiting list, cooking the books, and they're doing it. I worked with the VA after I retired. It's easy to cook the books on waiting lists. And the way I've seen it done is they're placed on a pending eligibility for an extended period of time until an appointment's available. That's cooking the books. We need to fix that, okay? Our veterans, 1% of our veterans 1% of our citizens volunteer to go in the military. We need to take very, very good care of that 1%. Yes. One of the things that we need, and I tell every congressman and every senator that I see, this is probably my biggest pet peeve. We send our young men and women into combat and we blind them. They come home, they need a CNI dog, and they need it bad. Department of Defense does nothing. Department of VA will pick up the veterans, the veterinarian bill for the dog. They do not provide a dog. We can send them to combat, but when they come back, we can't provide them a CNI dog. So one of our charities today is Southeast Guide Dogs. It takes $60,000 to train a guide dog. A dog can only work for about eight to 10 years, and then they have to have a new dog, okay? Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs does nothing. It takes days like today, and citizens like showed up today to support Southeast Guide Dogs to train dogs for our veterans. That's a cardinal sin. And every congressman and senator that reads this, shame on you for not providing a CNI dog for our blind veterans. Shame on you. One last question, Sergeant Major. It's, it's a fun one. Uh, as a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, you're entitled to salutes from everyone regardless of the rank. What's the most senior person that saluted you, sir? Oh, I would say the, well, the, the most senior yeah. would be the Chairman of Joint Chiefs. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> that is a tradition. Yes. That is not a regulation. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 A lot of people think it's a regulation that is a Medal of Honor recipient. Right. You know, it is a regulation that you must, regardless of your rank. That's not true. That is a tradition. A Normally practice amongst senior NCOs and officers. It's a great tradition. Okay. And it is a tradition. Thank you, sir.